another day, another year. 2024 is here. It's January 1st. Everyone still sleeps. Be quiet. My voice is still recovering from last night. Let's get to the ball. Woo! I hope you had a lot of fun celebrating New Year's. Here, everyone is still sleeping, but I want to shoot this video and give you an idea of what my reading plans for 2024 are. The sun is out. It's a beautiful day in Boulder, Colorado. Always a beautiful day in Boulder, Colorado. And 2023 was a fabulous year for me. I read 66 books. It ended up being probably the most I read in any single year. Although, who knows? I'd never kept track of numbers before. So this year, I'm not going trying to break any records, but I want to dive a little bit deeper into science fiction and read some amazing books outside the genre as well. So I need your help. I need you to tell me if these books are something that you've read, if you've enjoyed them. I'm going to have some questions for you. So please leave a comment below. Now, the first books I'm going to talk about are going to spoil a video I did recently. If you have seen my video where I rank all the books I read in 2023 from the worst all the way to the best, that's great. If you haven't seen that video and you think you'd like to check it out, go watch it now because these books are going to spoil the winner. So in any case, if you're still here, my favorite book of 2023 was Hyperion. I love this book. I enjoyed it so much. It was mind blowing. It was interesting. It was challenging. It was scary at times. So many different emotions packed into this Canterbury style tale. Hyperion, however, is not a standalone and I need to continue on. What I want to do is reread Hyperion, get back to that world, Time Tomb, Strike, Aww. Pilgrims, before I read Fall of Hyperion, and then hopefully continue on with the Endymion, Rise of Endymion. We'll see, but these two definitely. So even though I read Hyperion just like last year, beginning of the year, I want to reread it. This is the type of book that I think I'm going to be going back to and reading it again and again, perhaps not every year, but every maybe two or three for sure. So now I want to break these up into um, different categories. So there are books uh, that are outside the genre. There are some books here um, that are science fiction books that are standalone books. And then there are series. Let's start with that. There are several series that I want to continue on. Empire of Silence, Sun Eater, Christopher Rocchio. This was book one in the series. I really liked it. I loved it, I should say. This was a fabulous first entry into the series and I'm really stoked to continue on with uh, book two. I don't have book two. That's why I'm showing you book one. I need to find it. In the wild, uh, I couldn't find it anywhere. I've been looking for it for a few months. I may have to go online, which I do not like to do, but hey, no other choice. Golden Sun. Now, this is book two. I read Red Rising book one and I liked it. I didn't love it, but I liked it enough to continue on with the series. Actually, if it wasn't for the fact that the series is so popular and so many people love it, I probably would not continue with the series just based on book one alone. But I guess I'm a follower and I'm going to give Golden Sun a chance. Now, here are a couple of books. Actually, let's go here that I definitely want to read this year because I was supposed to read it last year. A Memory Called Empire, Desolation Called Peace, Duology, Arcadi Martin. These books are almost universally liked, if not loved. A lot of people love them, of course, but there are not too many detractors. I think solid books, solid reads, a political drama. Uh, I think uh, some interesting ideas. I'm looking forward to reading those. Let me know if you've read them. Let me know your thoughts. If you think um, some of these books should be prioritized or maybe skipped, let me know in the comments below. below. I'd love to hear from you. Now, Revelation Space. I really like um, Alistair Reynolds. House of Suns is one of my all-time favorite books. Uh, and uh, Revelation Space is book one in the Inhibitor trilogy. Redemption Arc is a book that I got for Christmas for my daughter Anya. I'm really looking forward to reading these two this year, or maybe all three. If I love them, maybe I'll get through a full series in one year. Wouldn't that be something? I have so many series that I'm in the middle of. Let me know your thoughts on Revelation Space, Alistair Reynolds. I know he's a physicist or was a physicist before he started writing. These books can be a little bit dense. I think uh, by based on what I've read from him, I can handle Alistair Reynolds, no problem. Now, can I hand, handle Gene Wolfe? Now, that is another question, another story. Who knows? The Book of the New Sun, I have them broken up into two bind-ups. It's basically four books. I have them as two bind-ups. Uh, let me know if you've read these. I know these can be difficult to read. Uh, Gene Wolfe does not hold your hand through this. The world building is mysterious. It's weird, challenging, uh, very inventive, right? Uh, so I'm looking forward to reading uh, 
Shadow of the Torture, which is book one in the Book of the New Sun series. And hopefully I'll just get right through it in one shot, all four books. Let's go. Here's one that I need to talk about. I've read Dune, I think at this point, I think it's been three times. I've enjoyed the movie. I'm looking forward to part two coming out soon. But I've never read Children of Dune. I've never read uh, Dune Messiah or any of the other books. I don't have even the, the rest. But the trilogy here needs to be read. Uh, I need to get to it. Finally, just stop rereading Dune and read on in the series. So those are the series uh, that I want to read. And here are some books that are standalones or kind of standalones. Speaker for the Dead, Orson Scott Card, obviously uh, an author uh, who I do not support as, a, as an author, as a person, but we can separate art from an artist, I think. Uh, and in this case, Speaker for the Dead, a follow-up to Ender's Game, hugely successful crossover books. Ender's Game is one of those books that people who don't read science fiction may actually end up reading. Anyway, Speaker for the Dead is kind of a book too. Orson, I'm um, sorry, Ender is old now, older. Many people feel that this is a better book than Ender's Game. And if that's the case, hey, I think I'm going to love it. Let me know if you found it to be better than Ender's Game. Player of Games by Ian M. Banks. So these are all standalone books, but they're part of a bigger uh, series. It's called The Culture Universe. And I'm looking forward to reading this book. This was supposed to get read last year. It didn't. Like so many books, it got pushed by other books that just felt more pressing at the time. But no, this year I'm reading Player of Games and uh, hopefully not just Player of Games, but other books in the culture universe as well. Now, some admissions here. I've never read Silverberg. Silverberg, classic science fiction. I need to get to Robert Silverberg. Let me know if A Time of Changes is a good place to start uh, with Mr. Silverberg. I think it is. But then again, I wouldn't know. Stevenson. I have his books on my shelf. I have, obviously, Snow Crush. I have Seven Eves, which I picked up not too long ago. And I got Anathem from my daughter, Natalia, for uh, Christmas. And I think I want to start with that. I've read reviews on all of these books. Uh, they all have uh, their detractors and people who love them a lot. Let me know your thoughts. Where should I start my journey with, with uh, Stevenson? Should it be... Um, one of these two books, or maybe, maybe I should go and read Snow Crush first. Let's talk about some books that are maybe outside the science fiction genre. Neil Gaiman, another book I got for Christmas uh, from uh, Natalia. I love Neil Gaiman. He's a nice guy, great author, good books. I've read quite a few of his books. I never read The Ocean at the End of the Lane, and I've heard nothing but good things about it. So this one is definitely, it's a short read. It's definitely going to get read this year, Augustus by John Williams. Now here's an author who I admire so much for one book, Stoner. He only wrote really like three books of note uh, and the only one that actually gave him some acclaim while he was still alive was this book, Augustus. So I wanna read it this year. Stoner was an amazing revelation uh, of a read for me. One of my top reads of the year, my number one read that's outside sci-fi genre of last year. Great book, such an amazing feel to it. This is a completely different read, Augustus, uh, but I'm looking forward to reading it at some point uh, this year for sure. Similarly, a book that I was going to read last year, but never got around to it. Actually, I think I opened it, started it, and I said, I'm not ready. Blood Meridian, bloody book, dark nihilistic view of the West, the frontier, uh, the Indian Wars. Oh my gosh, I got to read this. I have to be in the right mindset, kind of like uh, with... Uh, Gene Wolfe, you probably have to be in the right mindset. It's not a casual read uh, for a different reason. Uh, this book, obviously, Cormac McCarthy writes um, very sparse. His prose is completely different than Gene Wolfe's, but also you have to be ready for this book. Not a casual read. So yes, when I'm ready, I will tackle this. Now here's maybe a read that's a bit more casual. Cars, cars, Terry Pratchett. I've heard so many good things about Terry Pratchett. Now, I'm afraid. I'm a little bit afraid because honestly, my humor is a little bit different. Everyone who loves Hitchhiker's Guide to Galaxy was laughing their heads off. I was not laughing any at any point during uh, that read. And I'm afraid Terry Pratchett may be uh, of similar vein. And I don't know if I'm always uh, on board with the ridiculous aspects of some of these books, but I want to give it a shot. Uh, I hope I enjoy Guards Guards. And then maybe I'll continue on with the Discworld. Who knows? Swan Song. Let's get back to some serious stuff. Uh, Robert McCammon. This is kind of sci-fi dystopian world. 
similar supposedly to one of my favorite reads, The Stand. Um, I'm curious about this one. Let me know if you've read Swan Song. I've heard uh, nothing but good things about this book and also his other famous book, Boy's World, uh, Boy's Life. Brendan Sanderson. This has to get read uh, in 2024 for sure. Uh, this is book three in the Stormlight Archive. I think December book five is coming out. Ideally, I would have read this one and book four. I don't know if that's going to happen, honestly. These are just so big. I mean, how many pages is this? This thing is 1,250 pages or so. That's a lot of pages. That's like four science fiction books in one. But I do like Stormlight Archive and I do want to continue on with it. So uh, it will be read. So let me know your thoughts on some of the reads that I'm going to be picking up next year. I'm sure this list will change. Maybe some uh, books will fall out of the rotation and many, many, many others will make it in. And I'm very excited. It's going to be a fabulous read, uh, reading year. And I hope for some amazing surprises as well. Let me know what you're reading, what you're planning on reading, what are you excited about. And I'll talk to you on the next video. Bye.